how did uh, these advertisers lose their budget so quickly? Uh, first of all, let's talk about the auction model. It's important to understanding this. Uh, so here it is simplified. You start with a group of advertisers. In this case, I'm going to use travel advertisers as an example. Now, if you'll notice, there's a few other advertisers in there that just don't fit. But we'll get to that as we go through this. Second, uh, they're interested in buying ads when some, a user uh, types in the keyword travel. Uh, then they have to submit ads that have to be approved for that keyword. So they, uh, you know, they're book travel, travel Expedia, cheap air online official site. And then four, they make bids for clicks uh, at an, as in an auction. As you can see there, Orbitz, for some reason, bid only 12 cents, Expedia, 86 cents. Now this is the odd man out. You got free ringtones there bidding a buck 20 the most. So he's probably trying to get traffic uh, at this head keyword uh, term, which means head and tail means head is a very, gets lots and lots of traffic. Tail are the keywords that don't get much because they're very obscure. So how do, how do we determine what order these ads go in and which ones even make the cut? Is well, you take the bid price for all of these and then you, we, we make a quality score. It's based on relevance of the ad itself. It's based on relevance of the landing page. So uh, for example, ringtones are going to have a landing page that has nothing to do with travel. Even if their ad says, uh, buy ringtones that remind you of the tropics. Still, when you look at the landing page, it's going to get a low score. So uh, the quality score, you add the two together through a formula, and then you end up with the auction results. And in this case, uh, Expedia made the the top uh, ads and the others in the simplified case uh, just went down on the side uh, bar. Normal traffic activity uh, for auto insurance is you have users, you have auto insurance, this is small, I apologize, but they're, uh, they have their ads there, uh, all the different auto insurance based on their, their, their final scores, and humans are clicking on it, uh, and then they uh, convert, and the auto insurance companies you know, make money off of the conversion. This thing is building really fast. But what goes wrong is the clicks all of a sudden are going, they're clicking at an extraordinary rate, way more than any human could. And it all looks like it's coming from humans because they're so distributed from all these different bots that's part of the botnet that it depletes the ads, it gets lost in the middle of our, our, all these real people, these three blue boxes that are clicking. And at the end of the day, clicks go up, the budgets deplete, all those ads disappear because they have no more budget. That's what's called going dark. And what you have left at the very top is you see a little ad there. And this site you see is the actual site in the lawsuit that was left that when real users were clicking on this ad, because that's all that was left. Again, it was the top ad. And they had, it looked legitimate. But what this was was a lead generation site. So the uh, this, this defendant would take these users they, hit, they fill out a form, and what did he do? He sold it back to the advertisers that he just went, made go dark. So the guy was, it was a brilliant scheme. Fortunately, we caught up with him. It took a year. Um, and so who is behind this? That's what we want to know. Who is responsible? When legal heard about this, they decide this is a case that is ideal for us to go after. But before we get to that, let's talk about the search alliance. Uh, so uh, the search alliance is as you may have heard, Yahoo and Microsoft announced it over a year ago. And basically, they decided that individually, they can't go up against Google. Surprise. And so they decided by joining forces, they'd have a shot at, at perhaps uh, bridging that gap. And in conjunction with working together on the Bing uh, organic and Bing consumer side, Bing has been making huge strides in, in features. Uh, ever since uh, the president of the online division came over from Yahoo, Chi Lu, who only sleeps four hours a night, and that's true, I don't know how he does it, they've added feature after feature after feature that have been upping in Google. Because Google, as you know, is very simple, and everyone likes that, and, and it has its utility. It's, it's perfect for a lot of things, but Microsoft was betting that with a, little more, a few more features, they can, they can bring in, steal some consumers that uh, would want a decision engine, as they say, over a, a search engine. Um, so Google owns 65% of the market, as we know. Uh, Bing and Yahoo split the remaining business, and at the time I put this together, it was 12% Bing, which was, had made a huge advance from an earlier, a year before that, and Yahoo had 17% and is slowly shrinking over time. 
Uh, the alliance creates a single platform. So uh, Yahoo manages, they split up all the clients. Yahoo manages all the big clients, all the premium clients, and Microsoft takes the role as the technology platform, and therefore the clients they have are all the self-serve clients that come in through the UI using credit cards to buy ads. And uh, this created a better consumer experience because the complaints we heard time and time again is, is everyone uses Google, but they have to choose between Bing and Yahoo because they're two completely different systems and it's just not worth it to learn both of them individually. So by combining forces using a single platform, Microsoft Ad Center, uh, the migration for North America completed in October and was a success, fortunately. Been working on that for the past, past year. Uh, but as a 30% total combined market share now, or soon to be, we make a much larger target for fraudsters.